Okay, so every time I get a new device, it never fails that I want to figure out how I can possibly play retro games on it. And the Apple Vision Pro has definitely been no different for me. And over the weekend, I've been playing with a couple of different options to try to figure out what do we have that we can play retro games with the Apple Vision Pro. And you see on my screen here, I've got essentially six different ways in four major categories that I've figured out how to play retro games on my Vision Pro. And I thought in this video, I would just go through those four high level categories, kind of my thoughts about each different option, show you what they look like, and then summarize that at the end and find out from you in the comments what you would like to see more information about. So. I definitely am open to doing more videos about how to configure all of these things. Um, I just kind of want to know like, what's your favorite? What's the most interesting to you? So you can see here, I've got Super Mario World for Super Nintendo on several different screens in front of me. We're going to talk about each one of these. These first two right here are native emulators running on the Vision OS platform. So we've got in the top corner, this is RetroArch. So I've got that side loaded right here. Then I've got another native iPad OS app called Ignited. I've got that running locally as well. Then we've got a browser based option called Afterplay.io is the website in a browser called Nexus Plus. So that also gives you a native feel, but it's playing through a browser experience. Then down here, we've got our Mac remote screen sharing. So I'm just running RetroArch on my Mac and I've got it up here full screen. In the middle, I'm using Moonlight to connect to my ROG Ally. And um, this is just Steam big picture mode. So you can run games that way using a software called Emudeck. So I've got that over there on Windows. And then finally, I've got an HDMI capture of a Super Nintendo Mini going into my Mac Studio and then using an app called Castaway to cast it to my Vision Pro. So I've taken lots of notes here. We'll bring up these notes and kind of talk through these different options in the four main categories. We've got native emulators, the browser-based afterplay, screen mirroring or connecting to a Mac or a PC, and then HDMI capture and casting that to ourselves using either Castaway or NDI. Okay, so first to talk about the Vision OS emulators, there's two main ways that you can do this. You can either use Xcode to do it and you can build the application yourself and then send it over to your Apple Vision Pro, or you can sign up for an app signing service like MapleSign or uh, Signify, I think, or Sign Signology or something like that. There's different uh, Apple signing services. And the one that I found is $16 for a year of it. And then essentially you install an enrollment profile. They get your UD ID for your device. And then you get their application that then you can like sign the IPAs that you get. Now, what started this whole thing for me was this Reddit post. So underscore Aura, posted RetroArch running on the Vision Pro OS. And essentially, it, it was these Xcode steps where you're going to get the LibRetro project, you're gonna un, you know, install it using the uh, script for it, then you're going to um, get the cores, you're gonna open up the project in Xcode, and then you're going to change the signing and send it over to your Apple Vision Pro. So I did this, I was building a video about it, and unfortunately, um, I ran out of app IDs. So you could only do 10 app IDs per seven days. And since I was testing this over and over again, I ran out. The other thing is I believe if you don't have a paid developer account, you have to renew this every seven days. So you have to go through and you know, send it to yourself again to re-up. I'm not entirely sure if that's correct, but I think if it's a free account, you have to do it every seven days. If you pay $99 a year, then you can, you know, do it for a year 
of uh, having it on your device. So that's something else to keep in mind. And I went through the steps here and I've got them captured in my notion that essentially you need to set up Xcode. You have to turn on developer mode, pair your device to your Xcode environment. And then you're going through and you're running a few commands. It's fairly simple to follow through and do this, but I just kind of ran into some hiccups. So that's the Xcode option to get it running natively. Now, what I've chosen to do is I paid $16 a year for something called MapleSign. And I went through this process where I downloaded these particular IPA files. And then in their application, if you open up their app called MapleSigner, which you get this from Discord, then you're able to get their app. Let's see if I can get it up here. There we go. You get their application and then you go to sign IPA and then I downloaded these IPAs. So you select one of those, it runs through and signs it and then at the bottom it would say um, tap to install and then you have it installed on your device under compatible apps. So like there's Ignited, I have Dolphin, I have RetroArch, things like that. So that's the option to sign something and that is how I'm running these two applications in the top corner. So we got RetroArch right here. Let me get my controller turned on. This is the 8-bit do um, ultra or ultimate 2.4 gigahertz that supports Apple OS's including the Vision Pro. So if I activate this, I can unpause it and then I'm running this natively on the M2 and it runs fantastically well. Like the sound is really, really good. The, you know, I don't have any like control problems, no lag, anything like that. I'm really happy with that. Then I've got this other app right here, which is called Ignited. And I, again, I signed to this locally and I really like the look of this because it's a little bit more of a modern look and feel. It's a little bit easier to work with. And so we've got Super Mario World right here. And if we bring this up, it runs essentially the exact same way as RetroArch. We're able to you know, run everything natively, locally on the M2 for the Apple Vision Pro. So the other one that I've tested locally was Delta. And the challenge with that is it's essentially an iPhone app, so everything is really skinny. If you force it to landscape mode, then it's really skinny the other way. These two apps seem to be better because they're iPad OS apps, so you can get them you know, nice and square, make them bigger, which is a little bit easier to deal with. So when it comes to RetroArch versus Ignited, the, the things that come up for me are with RetroArch, you've got a ton of options here. You've got, you know, all of the different cores, you can really get into the settings and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And there's a huge community. There's a lot of information about RetroArch, but it's kind of complicated. Um, you know, so depending on how deep you want to get, how many guides you want to watch, you can use RetroArch and that's probably most people's mainstay. But Ignited, I really like this one because it's a little bit more modern looking. It's kind of easier just to get going with it a little bit more native iOS feeling. So that's kind of my preference. And that is running the Vision OS emulators natively. So let's collapse that and talk about Afterplay, the next option. So the next main category is using a browser called the Nexus browser. And this is available on the App Store. And what I love about this is one, it comes with all these bookmarks ready to go, so you can use it for your Xbox, cloud gaming, after play. I added Plex as well. This is a browser that is frameless, so you don't have all of the extra stuff that you get with, um, with Safari, for instance. So it's a really nice experience. It looks really good. With after play, you actually have aspect ratios so you can set it to three by two, four by three, 16 by nine, whatever you want. So I really like that because this feels 
the most native, right? I don't have any black bars. On these two, you've got those black bars on the side, so you kind of have to fiddle with, you know, resizing the window. But with this, it looks the most realistic, but, you know, it's a browser-based thing. So if I go in here, it might have sat too long. Okay, so it's, it's working. It's the same type of deal, right? I can go in here, I can play it. There's a little bit of stutter maybe, but I'm not noticing any kind of latency with uh, the controls. I'm able to go through and, you know, click just fine, make it jump. And uh, it's, it's working beautifully. And one thing else that I really like about this, if I go into the, uh, the little dot right here, is if you pay for the extra, you can do things like slow motion, fast forward. And if I go into the settings, then I can change the controls, do all this cool stuff. But let's go back to the library right here. And in the library, everything syncs for me. So you log in, I logged in with like my Google account and I can sync it from device to device. So that's really cool. If you're cool with being online and playing online where it renders, you know, up in the cloud, that is after play on Vision OS using the Nexus browser. So I like this, you can get into it for free. If you wanna go up to like N64 or something like that, you'll be paying for their, I think it's $6 a month uh, paid service. You get aspect ratios, no borders, all of that type of stuff. It's, it's a pretty good option other than you gotta be online and you're a little bit limited in what, you know, you can go up to N64. So the other one is just using screen mirroring, right? So I'm not gonna click too much into these two, these two options, but essentially you're either mirroring your Mac display or you're using Steam Link or Moonlight to go to a PC. So this is good if you've already got your emulators set up on your Mac or your PC and you wanna use the power of those to do your emulation and you just wanna like play through it. The downsides of it are one, you need a computer nearby in order to connect to it. And two, it depends on your Wi-Fi quality, right? Um, I haven't upgraded my Wi-Fi in a while. I'm still running like Wi-Fi 5 in my house and I've got a little bit of like latency issues when I try to use these two options. So these aren't my particular favorite, but if you wanna go and do like switch emulation or PS3 or something wild like that, you can do those things using a PC or a Mac using those emulators and then basically casting wirelessly to it. Then the fourth option is Castaway or using NDI. These options are pretty interesting because what you can do is you can hook up a mini console like this or I've got like a, an analog Super NT an analog pocket. If you've got your emulation on a piece of hardware with HDMI, you can use a capture card that I've got over there and essentially get that into your Mac. And then you're going to use an app called Castaway. So if I hide this up at the top, you download this from the app store, and then you essentially get the ability to select your caption card or your capture card select your frames per second and your bit rate. And then that sets it up as basically a broadcaster for your Vision Pro. So let me close out of this. And then inside your Vision Pro, mm -hmm. you're gonna open up a native app called Castaway. It's going to find your Mac device. And then what you do is you use the controller that's hooked up to that piece of hardware and then you're able to play you know like that so i've got this is the the super nintendo mini i'm able to use that i get the nice bezel all of that cool stuff using these controls now the challenge again is you have with that wi-fi quality right it's also a lot of parts and pieces to hook up this to a capture card hook that up to a mac you still need a mac computer or you need a Windows computer, or if you have like a really expensive like NDI encoder, you can definitely go with that route. So it depends on what you want. If you want to play actual hardware 
and um, be on a, a Vision Pro optimized uh, app. You can pay the 10 bucks, you could do Castaway. Another option is NDI. That NDI option, um, you, you basically would use OBS or some type of NDI encoder to hook up your console to it and then use an NDI capture application. The one that I've got is called uh, Vixio, V-X-I-O. And you can use that and get you know pretty low latency. You also get audio. The thing I didn't mention with Castaway is right now there's no audio coming through on this application. They say that you know that's coming later on, but that's something to keep in mind before you spend the ten dollars to buy Castaway. So those are the options that I've played with so far. You've got your emulators, your pros and cons there. It's more effort to get it going, either whether you're doing xCloud or Xcode or um, a signing service. You can go up to Wii if you get like Dolphin emulator working. You could do GameCube and Wii. Um, other than that, you're pretty much using like the multi emulators to do all of your like NES up through like N64. You can do Afterplay on the Nexus browser. This is definitely the easiest way to go. It's a beautiful app that is very optimized for your Vision Pro, so you don't get those horrible looking borders quite as much. So like I can go to like a three by two aspect ratio. I can, you know, go four by six if I wanna do taller. You know, you get more options, which is really cool. Um, the downside is like it's, it's on a browser and you can go up to N64. Um, I've heard there's an offline version of Afterplay uh, but I haven't explored that yet or figured that out yet. Um, if you want up to N64, you're going to pay $6 a month for this. Then there's screen mirroring. That has its pros. It has its cons. Um, you need a computer nearby. It depends on how good your streaming quality is to that computer. But you've got all the power, you know, to go all the way up to, like, Nintendo Switch or PS3 or whatever you want to do. The other benefit there is, like, I can play PAL World on my PC using Steam Link, right? So you have more options and more power. Then HDMI capture, this is like if you're like a hardware type person, you wanna go that route, but you know, we talked about all the cons for that. I think for me, what I'm probably leaning to more is for PC games like PAL World and stuff like that, I'm using the screen mirroring. When it comes to Xbox Cloud Gaming or Xbox Remote Play, I'm going to be using After uh, Afterplay or actually the Nexus browser because I'll be going to Xbox Cloud Gaming and play through that. And then when it comes to like the retro games, I'm probably going to be sticking to um, probably Ignited because I really like the feel of this one quite a bit. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, I'd, I'd be curious like what your pros and cons are for these different options and um, let me know if you want to see a deep dive on how to actually configure any of these things like if you want to know how to do the xcode build of retroarch and send that over to your apple, apple vision pro i'm happy to do a deep dive on something like that or if you want to see um, you know more options about how to hook up the hdmi capture something like that so uh, let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.